be shut all through the holidays. I knew it would be. Thinking trousers are cutting me in half. You've been overdoing the Christmas pud again? No, it was very good this year's apps. I think they must have shrunk or something. Yeah, sure. What? No, no, come on. Do I look as though I'll put weight onto you? You look as though you're about to have an heart attack. This is every blasted year. I have to go on a diet now to Easter to get rid of this lot. Oh, it's just as well the cafe weren't open then. Less temptation. It's actually hectic, isn't it? Make the most of it. I am. What's this? A convoy? Hey, son. You're looking well. Where's it due, mate? Yeah, we lost, Eddie. <laughs> it's closed. A what? Oh, no, and I was just fancying a cup of tea. Yeah, that kiosk by the station's shut and all. Well, it's a good job. One of us thinks of everything. Oh, oh. nice one, Paul. You're a star. Brilliant. Well done, Polly. Bless you. That's Everyone have a good Christmas? Oh, you must be joking. Chill on. Christmas is over, may the next one be a long time coming. Oh, dear. Do you have family trouble? Yeah, only the aggravation. I'll tell you what, next year it's just going to be me, Julie Andrews, and the takeaway pizza. <laughs> Lovely. What's the matter, Dave? You look a bit under the weather. Oh, nothing. It's just always miserable this time of the year. You know, you might be suffering from that SAD. SAD? Yeah, you know, sad, seasonal affected disorder. Yeah, apparently it's a long night or something. Make people very depressed in the winter. Dave isn't suffering from sad, he just is. Oops, Hunter. Seasonal greetings, officers. Well, here you are, this festive time of year, out in the cold but still defending the public against the forces of chaos. Cheers. Cheers. Perhaps I can offer you a little stiffener for that. Oh, no thanks. Well, the least I can do, surely. Sorry, sir, but uh, we're not allowed to drink on duty, unfortunately. Of course, yes. Well, I must be on my way. But first, may I wish you all a very happy and prosperous New Year to you and yours. Same to you. You see? That's exactly what I mean. Everybody's so nice at Christmas, it's unnatural. Did you get what you wanted, Sam? What? Christmas present. All I want is for this shift to come to an end. That and an aspirin. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Oh, Sarge, there's Mrs. Bourne asking for your reception by name. At last, something's happening. Even if it is only Mrs. Bourne and her mince pies. Yeah, but Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without Mrs. Bourne and her mince pies, would it, Bob? Yeah, it brings back a couple, will you? They do look delicious, but I've eaten so much over the last few days. Oh. One more mouthful and I think I'll burst. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mrs. Bourne. How are you? Oh, I'm just fine, thank you, Mr. Boyden. Just fine. And how's Albert and uh, Maggie, isn't it? No, dear. It's Peggy. Well, Albert had a bit too much sherry on Boxing Day, and the little ones got overexcited and played poor Peggy up bit. Still, it wouldn't be Christmas without a bit of drama, would it? And it wouldn't be Christmas without your wonderful mince pies, Mrs. Bourne. May I? Oh, please. Mmm. Shame, you've got to try one of these. Yeah, I was just saying to Mrs. Bourne, I'm really full, you know. You won't know what you're missing unless you try one. No. Oh, go on then. One won't do any harm, will it? George, try one of these. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm the same as him, so a bit, you know. What's the matter with everyone today? You've got to try one of Mrs. Bourne's mince pies. It's tradition. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Mm. Thanks a lot, Mrs. Bourne. Happy New Year. <laughs> Don't forget to save a few for Mr. Conway. Oh, that's right. He's a big fan of your mince pies as well, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Is he in? <laughs> Sorry. No, he's, um, mm. <laughs> he's at the neighbourhood watch Christmas buffet with Mr. Munro sauce. Thanks for coming and adding artificial uh, gravitas, is it right? <laughs> It's a pleasure, really. Oh, God. Yes, uh, building bridges with the community and all that. Certainly, I'm grateful, but I've never had such a dreary meal in my life. Wonder who was behind that, huh? Is there a problem, Mr. Gilson? No problem, Mrs. Carter Jones. Just can't believe you gave us turkey, that's all. It seemed like a good idea when the committee booked it back in August. Genius. 
What do you think we've all been eating for the last week? I just can't help causing trouble, can you, Mr. Pearson? Better get a move on. If I stand here much longer, she'll issue an injunction against me. Drunk, Mr. Pearson. Why? What's next on the agenda, Mrs. Carter Jones? Are you planning to have me arrested for being drunk at a Christmas party? Mr. Pearson, don't you think it's time you started to grow up? Don't patronise me. Hey, hey, come on, pal, back off. Okay, okay, it's okay. She's not worth it, I know that. I'm sorry. Look, why don't you just join the others and enjoy your coffee, okay? <laughs> Who rattled his cage? Sorry about that, Inspector. It's okay. We'll uh, put it down to high spirits, shall we? Mm, maybe. Although, between you and me, Mr. Pearson does have a bit of a problem dealing with authority. Really? Anyway, not for me to sit in judgment. Takes all sorts. And I thought we'd have his speeches now, if that's okay. Fine, yes. Oh, if you people, would you move your chair? It's all done very well so far. Oh, yeah. Very neighbourly. What's the problem? We want her arrested or moved on or something. Well, why is that? She's making a nuisance of herself. Mm. First of all, she demanded Christmas cake, and then when we wouldn't give her any, she started playing that damn thing. Well, I don't think playing a harmonica is an arrestable offence. It is the way she plays it. That's not the point. The point is we want her arrested. What for? Disturbing the peace. She's actually disturbing your peace. It's not quite the same thing. Don't get lippy with me, young man. We pay your wages, you know. OK. Uh, look, I I'm sorry. Uh, my wife's getting upset. It it's just that this tramp smells so bad and seems so unstable. To be perfectly frank, she's frightening my wife. Well, I don't see how a homeless old woman playing a mouth organ is any threat to your wife, sir. D look, we're all queuing here perfectly legitimately. We don't want any trouble. D all we're asking is if you could perhaps just gently move her on. Well, I'll certainly ask her to do that. But I can't oblige her to move on. After all, this is a public highway, and if I ask her to move on, I'll have to ask everyone else to move on. We can't have one rule for the rich and one rule for the poor, can we? I just couldn't bear to think of you out here in the cold, so I brought you a little something to warm you through. The thing is, sir, we're really not allowed to drink on duty. Although it's a lovely fault. I'm a little a sniff there can't do any harm, surely. We'd love to join you, but if anybody found out, it would be more than our job's worth. Oh, come now, a toast to the new year. The old boy's pissed as a new, he barely knows who he is. <laughs> Listen, sonny, my name is Greg Monteith, and I'm a very old man who's very grateful and would like to show his appreciation to the boys and girls in blue. I don't know quite what your problem is. Well, we really are the businesses. Aren't they? Yeah, all right, Reg. Do you want another? Uh, no, Sarge, all right, thanks. I mean, they are delicious, but, uh, well, I couldn't force another one town. Oh, well, your loss. Mm. I'll nip round a custody, see if I can tempt somebody else. Oh, here we go. Oh, dear. There's an old lady been found unconscious. An ambulance has been called. What? And the old lady in question is a Mrs Ida Bourne, 39, Lasser Street. Mrs Bourne? She was only here a minute ago. We'll get someone down there, ASAP. Sound. Listen, I'll go and look after it. It's only around the corner. Can you get these down to custody? I promised June one. Yeah, sure. Come on, Reg. Sound. Any unit from Sierra Oscar, a collapse at 39, a 39, a Lasser Street. An ambulance has been called. Any unit deal? Yeah, Sierra Oscar from Sierra One. We can deal. Oh, thanks, Johnny. Uh, the informant is a Mrs. Derrington at number 4141, Lasser Street. And then there were four. Oh, hello. Burglary, Dunford Close. Here's another one. Disturbance at the Bear's Head on the Cockcroft Estate. This is more like it. Any unit from Sierra Oscar, a disturbance at the Bear's Head on the Cockcroft Estate. Uh -oh. The informant is a Mr. Bruce, a landlord. Sierra Oscar from 84, we can deal. Come on, we're out of here. Thanks, Dave. Well, now there are only three of us. Surely we can all enjoy a wee dram. Uh, Mr. Muncy. Oh, please. I won't tell anybody any if you won't. Can any yes, I was right. Sorry. Sorry again. Sorry. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 85. We'll take that, Reg. Thanks, Vicky. 
the informant is a Mrs. Perry, 89, Dumford Close. Received. Uh, Mr. Monty, thank you very much for your support, but we really do have to go now. Happy New Year. Glasses, glasses. Mr. Monty. Good man. Down the hatch. Uh, the tray. <laughs> the tray. The tray. <laughs> Sarge, this is Mrs. Derrington. Mrs. Derrington? She found Mrs. Bourne unconscious by the front door. Well, is Mrs. Bourne all right? Well, she's out cold, but other than that, I don't know what's happened. No one's seen anything. It's like she's just collapsed. Mrs. Bourne, are you all right? She's not responding at the moment. Right, we'll look after her. Has anyone checked the house? I wouldn't, Sarge. We've already done that. Haven't we, time? And the success of Neighbourhood Watch demonstrates what we as a community can achieve if we all work together. <laughs> Simply by watching over each other, we can help to prevent crime. If you only knew, Mr Conway. And finally, I'd like to assure you all that during the next 12 months, we'll be using all our resources and doing everything we can to reduce the number of turkey dinners in San Hill. <laughs> well, that's marvellous. Tough on heartburn. Tough on the causes of heartburn. <laughs> Mr. Pearson, please. Come out of Sheila. Left your sense of humour at the High Court? <laughs> yes, well, before there are any additions to the violent crime statistics, perhaps I'd better hand over to the person most responsible for making all this happen. Your area coordinator, Mrs. Carter Jones. Thank you, dear. Well, there's very little I'd like to add. Well, don't you sit down then. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Your dedication what is it with those two? I thought it was going to go off. Work. Talk about community yeah. spirit. Mrs Perry? Yes. Oh, thank God you're here. I've just come back from spending Christmas with my mum in Leeds. When I got back, the front door was open. Could the intruder still be inside? Uh, no. I don't think so. You don't think... I'll take a look upstairs. Thank you. It's OK. I haven't had a chance to check if anything's missing, but someone's definitely been in the house. How can you tell? Well, some of the cupboards in the living room have been opened. And the radio in the kitchen was left on, but sort of not tuned in properly. We'll take a look around. Yourself. All clear upstairs. Windows? Oh, they all seem secure. I'll check down here. Try the back door? Mm -hmm. It's locked. I'm always very careful. Let's have a look at the front door. Been meaning to get those window locks fitted for ages. Well, none of them have been touched. There doesn't seem to be any sign of the fourth century. What does that mean? Well, I'd say whoever's been in your house, Mrs. Perry, had a key. But we live here on our own. No one else has a key. RSPCR on the way. Right. Is she all right? It's too early to tell. I think she might have caught something from the cats. Cat scratch fever or. Toxoplasmosis or something. Both probably by the look of the place. Oh, that's disgusting. What, have you ever been in there? Yes, once. Well, why didn't you tell someone? Social services or something? Environmental health, more like. More like mental health, poor soul. Mrs. Darrington? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me something about her family? Well, she hasn't got a family. Well, yes, she has. She told me about them. Albert, Peggy and the little ones. Well, I've lived next door to her for seven years and I've never heard of any family. 
And she never gets any visitors. I'm going to go back to Sun Hill and check. Well, thank you, Mrs. Derrington. You two better wait for the RSPCA. What? Well, someone's got to let him in. You can't go around beating people up in your condition. <sighs> Don't worry about my condition, sunshine. See them? They're all mine. God help me. So having a baby doesn't frighten me. What frightens me is the thought of spending the rest of me life with that useless git. So she's your wife? Not for long if I have anything to do with it. She's gone too far this time. I want her charged. Do you hear that? I'm going to have you charged. He turned off for Christmas dinner drunk on Boxing Day. Can you believe that? Yeah, well, I reckon with your cooking, the turkey might just have been done by then. The git spends the whole of Christmas in this dump while his wife's eight months pregnant. The state of you, it's a mystery how you ever got that way. I don't know how I managed it. Oh, yeah. is that right? Okay, come it's on. It's usually over so quick. I never know when you've done it hey, anyway. Hey, 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 Listen, darling, on. there's plenty who don't complain. Only because they've had a good laugh. Yeah, you stupid tart. That's, That's it, right, right. you oh, heard it now, mate! Oh, oh, right. That's it, Mrs. Lipton, you're nicked. Mr. Lipton, if you want to charge your wife, we'll read a statement. No problem. Whenever I do come home, I feel like a stranger in my own house. Because the kids can't remember who you are. Come on, boys, you're turning these kids against me. Well, could you two give it a rest? Come on, in the van, Mrs. Lipton. You, lad. Look, well, I do anything prison. for these kids. No, just get in a van, That's please. That's the point, Mrs. isn't it? You don't do nothing for them because you live in that bloody pub. Well, I'm not entitled to have a no, drink at Christmas. You two keep the noise days. down, please. That's not the presents, didn't I? Please. Well, the kids did until oh. Boxing Day. Quiet! Thank you. OK, OK, but there's no need to shout. My wife's expecting, you know. Get in the van, please, man. Look, are you absolutely certain, Mrs. Perry? Maybe you gave the key to a neighbour once while you were away. Or a builder. Or a cleaner. Look, I've told you, no one else has a key to this house. Well, what about you then, Rachel? Could you have given a key to someone? Hey, don't try and blame me for this. Rachel, calm down. No one's trying to blame you. The officer's just doing his job. It's really odd, you know. The only thing I can see that's missing is the drinks trade some glasses. Yeah, uh, okay, all right. Would you want to give me a description, then? You never get stuff back, though, do you? Rachel, don't be rude. Why don't you go and ring Sasha? Well, there were eight blue tumblers, about so big, on a galleried silver tray. Oh, and a nice bottle of whiskey, single malt. What's the matter? Would you excuse us a moment, Mrs Perry? I just need to talk to my colleague. <laughs> Is that ring any jingle bells? Yeah, this could be very embarrassing. Do you think it's the old bloke from the car park? Of course it is. I mean, the description's perfect. The car park's just over the back there. I mean, it's just too much of a coincidence. Great. Mrs Perry comes home to find she's been burgled, and the whole time we've been socialising with the burglar. Ah! That's my tray! <clears throat> What's going on? Good question. Where's Moira? Who is Moira? And those are my tumblers. He's the burglar. Are you going to arrest him? Burglar? What the hell are you talking about? For God's sake, arrest him or something. What are you all doing in my house? Just get this man out of my house. Oh, hold on a minute. Let's just get this straight. Are you saying this is your house? Yes, of course I am. But you're saying this is your house? Yes! Well, you can't both be right. In my okay, wife's okay, okay, okay. anyway, okay. I should be... Oh, okay. 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 Oh, right. oh, 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 leave him alone! Oh, oh, leave him alone! Oh, 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 I gave you a chance, didn't I? I'm arresting you for assaulting a police officer. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioning something which you later rely on in court. I'm sorry, sir, but we really do have to sort this out. So if you don't mind me asking, how did you get into the house? With my keys, of course. How else does one get into one's own house? Ask her if she's got any keys. I'll bet you she hasn't. Now go on, ask her. Look, of course I've got keys. And look at this lot. Bank statement, credit card statement, gas, electric, all addressed to Mrs J Perry, 89 Dunford Close, Sunhill. 
Where do you think these came from? Never Never Land? I don't know what's going on here, but this woman is clearly devious. It's my opinion that it's all part of an elaborate scam. Oh, look, I don't believe this. Just get this man out of my house. Yoo-hoo. Anybody home? Oh, no. Mrs. Harper from next door. Oh, there you are, Mrs. Perry. I thought I heard a bit of a shout, and I was just checking that you were all right. Oh, dear. Police. I hope this isn't a difficult moment. Not at all. In fact, you might be able to help clear something up once and for all. Oh, really? Well, I'm only too glad to help, of course. You know I don't like to intrude normally. Oh! Greg! What on earth are you doing here? What am I doing here? I live here. You should know that better than anyone. Live here? And uh, you've been our next-door neighbour since, uh... God knows when. Since 1982? Well, yes, that is right, Greg. Is it? You moved out in 1989. That's nine years ago, Greg. What's going on here? Hmm? What have we got here? And I saw the bear's head on the cockcroft, Sarge. You all right? You look a bit rough. I'm all right. No, actually, Mrs. Lipton's the one being charged with her saw. Oh. Uh, would you like to take a seat? The uh, victim of the attack is her husband, Tommy Lipton. Yeah, when she's booked in, I'd like her to see the FME. Better safe than sorry. Hey! 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 What type of an example is it to the ball? Mr. Lipton. I can't let it go on, no, can I? neither can I. Will you George, this is Mr. Lipton. He's a victim of an assault. Look, yeah. I've got to take a statement from him. I'll be about half an hour. And? Well, and these were his kids, yeah? I mean, look, can you just look after him? Just for half an hour or so. What do you want me to do with him? Well, put him in the front interview room and get him some pop and crisps and just keep him amused for half an hour, will you? Please. Yeah, I can't. Great. Listen, Lee, you sure you don't want me to call for some backup here? Give it a rest, Sam. You all right, love? Lovely. How are you, yeah, sweetheart? Yeah, good. Let's get you in the back here, right, eh? OK. Good step. What? It's all cheeky. Oh, what's your head? Oh, oh you naughty boy. <laughs> there seems to be hundreds of them. They're all over the house. Never seen anything like it. I have. Well, all I can say is I'd rather you than me. Yeah, so we'll leave you to it then. All right. What? Are you going, then? Well, yeah. Well, surely you've got someone else coming down to help you, right? Well, no. Holiday season, you know. I was rather hoping you'd, um... Never mind. Forget it. Look, mate, uh... Sorry, we'd like to help, you know, but we've been uh, trying to catch criminals, not cats. Right, I see. Of course. OK, fine. See you then. If you'd, uh, just pull the door to when you finished, yeah? Yeah, OK. Uh, listen, I hope you had a great Christmas and have a great New Year, eh? Well, I suppose we are free, actually. I mean, until we get another call. Tone? Really? Yeah, we could give him an hand for a minute or two. What do you think, Tone? Oh, God, it is Christmas. Whoa, whoa, just don't hurt me, I'm too. <coughs> hey, 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 what do you think you're playing at, eh? Beating a confession out of him. <laughs> do what? They're trying to fit me up, and I'm invited to a phone call. Yeah! yeah. Sit down, have your drinks, eh? Leave it out, copper. You've got nothing on us. Don't you get fresh from me, son, right? Now, you might think that you're a big shot out there, but this is my world, see? And what I say goes. And believe you me, I'll have you singing like a canary by the time that I've finished with you. Do you understand? Ah! Gotcha! Hey, 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 didn't I, hey? Come on, what do you want? What kind of crisps, please? Oh. oh, I didn't know those were there. Hey, hey, what's going on? 
You wouldn't want to know, believe me. But that's Mrs. Bourne's mince pies, so delicious. No, don't come in! June, stop her! Yeah. Whoa! Hello, Brenda. Hello, June. Right, can you step outside, please? What's going on, Sarge? Uh, just take a step back, please, Luke. What is it with you and tramps, Luke? You can't call me a tramp these days, Sergeant Boyden. I'm a homeless person. You see, lads, Brenda is a regular visitor to Sun Hill. In fact, she spends every Christmas trying to get arrested so that she can get free bed and breakfast for a couple of nights over the holiday. Much nicer than Barton Street. But she assorted me, Sarge. We can't just forget about that, can we? There's one born every day. And he's sweet and so young. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Luke, the problem is that on her last visit to Sun Hill, a Brenda infected the entire cell block with lice and the whole place had to be fumigated. So this time, she and everything she comes into contact with is going to have to go down to the delousing centre at Milford Depot and be completely fumigated before being allowed back on the premises. <laughs> Hey, nice one, Luke. <laughs> and that includes the van she arrived at Sun Hill in, the van driver, and Brenda herself. Oh, what? I don't believe this. Oh, come on, Sarge. I was only driving the van. It's no use you two whinging. I am not letting you back in here until you've been completely fumigated, and there's an end to it. Now, don't worry, boys. I'll look after you. Luke, you are Kids, and I can tell you, the sixth one's on its way! Matt, oh. can you call an ambulance for me and find out what's happened to the FME? Oh. I'll try and make Mrs Lipton more comfortable. <gasps> get the doctor! What can I get you? Just get the doctor! Matt, today would be oh. good! Right. Oh. oh, don't, Tone, you'll hurt it! Hurt it? By the look on oh. its face, I'm the one who's in danger. Oh. Oh. Do you know, I reckon they're all in here. You can have a couple of the old ones left in the kitchen. Oh, this is hopeless. Look, why don't we start by the door and move in a line towards that corner? Two people do not make a line. Oh, you've got any better ideas? Sardines. Sardines? Yeah. My aunt's old moggy used to love sardines. We can use it as bait. Lure Albert and Peggy into the cages with them. We ain't got any sardines. Albert and Peggy? Albert and Peggy and the little ones. Oh, that's hilarious. What? Well, every year, Mrs. Bourne updates Sergeant Boyden on Albert and Peggy and the little ones. He thinks they're her family. And what? And he's been asking after them for the last eight years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That couldn't be, could it? Oh, I think we've just found Albert and Peggy's little ones. Well, it's not in here. It must be that green trial. Where was I? Uh, Mr. Monteith, pillar of the community. Oh, that's right. Yes, community watch, church fate, all of that. And he was a councillor in the early 80s. He was dedicated to Moira, his wife. When she died, it broke his heart. He couldn't bear to live in the house on his own. Uh, so he sold it to Mrs. Perry. Well, obviously not, or she'd know who he was, wouldn't she? No, he sold it to a young man, a solicitor, I think he was, but he was never here. Now, he sold it on to Mrs Perry. Ah, here we are. It makes you think, doesn't it? I mean, when you buy a new house, you never change the locks, do you? Someone could easily have a spare set of keys. I mean, how would you know? A bit spooky, really. Here it is. Greg Monteith, Canley House, Gatley Road. Canley House, that's the old people's sheltered housing on the other side of the high street, isn't it? Well, don't ask me. Makes sense, though. Mind you, it's a sad day when Greg Monteith ends up in sheltered housing. Makes me feel my age, I can tell you. You should have met him back in the old days. He was so full of life, so much fun. Every New Year, they used to have these fantastic parties. Famous, they were. And Greg was so sharp, such a good looker. Actually, I always thought there was a certain electricity between us, if you know what I mean. <laughs> really? 
Well, don't sound quite so surprised. I was quite a looker myself once upon a time. No, I didn't actually mean... Oh, anyway, what does it matter now? He was devoted to Moira anyway. And now... I can't even remember who he is. Moira! Oh, Mrs. Harper, it's you. Where's Moira? I just wanted to say how appalled I was by the behaviour of Mr. Pearson earlier. Most of us really do appreciate the work you people do. Thank you, yes. Mind you, I do get the impression that there's some sort of history to your relationship with Mr. Pearson. Well, you could say that. He's my neighbour. Well, he lives in the street behind my house, as it were. His, his back garden backs onto mine. Yes, I see. Yes. We don't get on very well, I'm afraid. It can be very difficult and very vindictive if things don't go his way. I mean, he only became involved in the neighbourhood watch scheme to try and annoy me. Really? I'm sorry. That was mean-spirited of me, wasn't it? I, I, I shouldn't have said that. I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Oh, oh Matt, what's the news on the ambulance? It's going to take half an hour. Oh, you are joking. Well, it's not my fault. There's been a pile-up on the N25. All the amateurs for miles around are going to be seconded. We can have a pile-up of our own if they don't get here soon. What about the oh. FME? He's stuck with the ambulances. Oh, oh brilliant. Look, Mrs. Lipton. Look, I'm, I'm very sorry, but it looks like there's going to be a bit of a delay with the ambulance getting here. Good. I've told you I'm not going to hospital anyway. But you're about to have a baby. I've had five kids. You can't scare me. It's just that I think the hospital will be the safest place for you in the circumstances. I'm not going to hospital and that's the end of it. I'm not having some snotty know-it-all midwife telling me when and when not to pause. Oh, my God. Matt! <laughs> all right, all right, don't panic, don't panic. We'll get the error car around the back and take her to hospital ourselves. No, 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 it's far too late for that. She wouldn't go with you anyway. All we can do is make her as comfortable as possible and hope that the FME or the ambulance gets here soon. Yeah, but what if he doesn't come? Then we need loads of hot water and clean towels. Right. Oh. Yeah? What for? I don't know. I'll get the first aid book. This is so humiliating. Tell me about it. Yeah, I will tell you about it, actually, because it's your fault as it happens. No, I've said I'm sorry, and it's not my fault anyway. Oh, will you two stop moaning? I remember when I first came here, that was humiliating. I don't want to know. I had to strip off down to me all togethers, because me clothes had to be burnt. Oh, that's lovely. Then they hosed me down, and I was scrubbed and showered with chemicals and detergents and stuff. Who's they? The attendants. And after they finished, they gave you the once-over, you know. Check out all your little nooks and crannies. Make sure you're in the clear. <laughs> God. I used to like it, really. Very refreshing. A fresh start, you know. Oh, this is a nightmare. Mind you, that was 20 years ago. It's not like that these days. A quick chemical spray in a bar, and that's your lot. Cut back, you see. Oh, here we go. Hello, Ron, love. Had a nice Christmas. Hello, Brenda. Yeah, lovely. Thanks, you. Oh, I just got back from the Caribbean. Eight pips are lift down. Right. Come on, boys. I said, don't look after you. Here we go through this way. Come on, then. Okay. Come on, through here. Come on. In this way. Freeze! I'll oh, take your legs off. Hands up. Above your head. All right, just, just don't shoot me, all right? Don't oh, shoot. Up against the door. Hello, sir. <clears throat> What's going on, George? Uh, well, Eddie Santini asked me to look after these kids whilst uh, he was interviewing his father, sir. Where's the mother? In custody, sir. In custody? What for? Assault, sir. Assault? Social service has been called? Well, no. You, you see, the thing is that the dad actually hasn't been arrested, so... Just get this lot out of sight, will you, George? Yes, sir. I'll find out what's happened to the parents. How's she doing? Well, she's having contractions every two to three minutes, which, according to this, means the birth of the baby's imminent. Oh, I don't believe and it. And we don't panic. I'm sure the ambulance will be here soon. And if not, look, everything we need to know is in here. Wait a minute. What's all this wee business? Matt, I am not doing this on my own. I need some assistance. Oh, no, June, you must be joking. Oh, Matt, what on earth's going on? We've got a bit of a medical emergency, sir. Medical emergency? Matt, will you get your arm? Oh, oh, 
cell, sir. Oh, Jim, what the hell's going on? Uh, a prisoner's having a baby in one of our cells, sir. And the FME and the ambulance are stuck on the M25. All right, Matthew, calm down. Is this the mother of the five little tykes that are giving George a run? I'm afraid so, sir, yeah. Oh, you'd have thought you'd had enough by now. Well, she's trying for a girl, sir. Really? June, you and I better deal with this. Obviously, it's not very comfortable for Matthew. Um, have you had experience of this before, sir? Yeah, when you reach my age, you've had experience of most things. <sighs> no, I'm not sir. Doctor, my God! Mrs. Dixon, no, just try it. All right. Be comfortable and calm. <laughs> Tommy! Matt! Yeah? Get him out of here! Sorry. <laughs> All right, Mr. Dixon. Everything is fine. It won't be long now. What? Get the father in here. Right, the father. Tommy! I'm gonna kill you! The ambulance and it's on its way. Listen, but things I are happening know. rather fast. There's a fair chance the baby could be born here. You're kidding me. Technically, your wife's still under arrest, but we thought it only fair that you should be present at the birth of your child. I see. Well, you're doing really well. <sighs> and again, breathe and push. Good luck, mate. Yeah. You think it'll be alright for us to sneak off now? Yeah, it's all winding down. Believe it. You clumsy oaf. Who are you calling an oaf? You. you walk straight into me. Absolutely now don't rubbish. star Mrs. Carter Jones. Anyone who's army. I don't need an army, Mr. Pearson. I've got the police. Oh, yeah. All right. That's yeah. Nice. All right. Get off I'll me. I'll work with you. Oh, that's okay, Mrs. Carter Jones. He's done. Right. Now look, Mr. Pearson. I don't know what your problem is, but threatening behaviour is a serious offence. And if I see any more of it, I'll have you down that nick so fast, your feet won't touch the ground. <laughs> Stand any more of this. Oh, come on. You don't know what it's like. She's completely balmy. Pull yourself together, man. She's taken me to court 17 times in the last three years. I can't take any more of it. What? It all started when I had the loft converted. She rang the planning department and told them I was building a block of flats without permission. <laughs> they went into a complete paddy. It cost me three grand to sort it out. I won in the end though, but Sheila seemed to have got a taste for legal confrontation. She runs this neighbourhood like some sort of gangster. She makes life hell for anyone that stands up to her. She's taken 12 of us to court for planning, noise pollution, litter, trespassing, you name it. But surely, Mr. Pearson, if people obeyed the rules, she wouldn't be able to take them to court. But that's just it. She's never won a case. She owes me £5,000 of legal costs. I'd have to take her to court to get it back. It's mad. Well, why don't you move house? I can't sell the house, can I? Every time I put the house on the market, she starts some half-baked court case which shows up on the purchaser search and they pull out. What a nightmare. Yes, it is a nightmare. It's only just begun. She's taken a law degree herself. <laughs> she hates me, but she doesn't want me to move. It's as if making my life hell is her reason for living. Come on, Mr. Pearson. Uh, I'm sorry. Look, why don't you take a minute to calm down, then come back in and have a nice cup of coffee? No, no, I, I, I can't go back in there. I can't trust myself. I don't know what I might do. I think I'd better go home and calm down a bit. Well, I think that would be a very sensible idea, Mr. Pearson. Look, why don't you give me a ring at my office tomorrow? And I'll put you in touch with somebody at the Citizens Advice Bureau. Perhaps they can help you to sort all this out before somebody gets into serious trouble. Well, thanks.
Everything all right, sir? Fine, yes. Where is he? He's gone home to cool off. Oh, well, oh, well, perhaps that is for the best. Indeed, yes. Uh, and as things seem to be dying a death here, perhaps we ought to make a move too, Andrew. Oh, absolutely. Oh, right, OK. Well, thanks so much for coming. Oh, uh, that's fine. Thank you very much for inviting us. It's uh, very important work you all do. Oh, well, thank you. That's very encouraging. Bye-bye. OK, yes, bye. <laughs> Nutty is a fruit. Next, please. Who's first? It's your turn. Oh, cheers. Steady. I had no idea. I've got five kids, but I've never been in there when... You know... When... Uh, I mean, I had no idea. It's... Horrendous. Oh no. I always go down the pub with my brother. I don't blame you, mate. She's done that five times. Mine boggles. But why do they want to make us watch, though? What's that all about? That force me. I mean, it's like some sort of medieval torture. Tell me about it. Cup of tea. I mean, I had no idea. I couldn't stay. I just couldn't. No. I'll get us both a cup of tea. Ow. Hiya, how are you doing then? We got five. So far. Oh, well done. I'll leave you another box just in case. All right? What do you mean, we? What do you mean, so far? Look. I don't want to ever hear about tramps, lice, medicinal bats ever again, all right? All right, all right, let's just forget about it. It's over. Oh, you think so, do you? The lads in there find out. We're toast. Yes, Sam, I know. Thank you, gentlemen. I feel like the Queen was behind the driver's Yeah, door. yeah, just <laughs> get out. Do you think this new coat suits me? What? This new coat they gave me. Do you think it makes me look fat? Brenda? What? Have you heard of the phrase, police brutality? Oh, what? Oh, what are you? Where? Eddie, shut it! What's going on, Sarge? Sounds like someone's been killed in there. You couldn't be more wrong. Sorry? History in the Mikey, mate. What? Prisoners having a baby in there. No! Oh, way. Way. It's okay, Mr. Monteith. You're home now. Home? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Where, where's Myra? Hello, Greg. How are you? We've been worried. Who the hell is this? A word. Is that your Mr. Monteith? It certainly is. Well, he's been getting increasingly depressed and confused for the past 18 months. I'll have to call the doctor in again. Well, I don't think he should be wandering around the streets in that state. Well, this isn't a home. These are private flats. You know, he can go where he likes. I can't stop him. 
Mind you, if it's Alzheimer's, he will have to go into a home eventually. I'm not staying here. Honestly, Mr. Monteith, you do live here. What are you talking about? Come on, Greg, it's me, Alan. Don't you recognize me? I'm not staying here in this strange place with this strange man. Now, where is Moira? She can explain everything. Once he's in his own flat amongst familiar things, he might start to come back. Come so. back from where? This is a place for old people. Look at them all. Uh, you can't leave me here. This is all a terrible mistake. Come on, Greg. Let's go and get your nice piece of Christmas cake. I don't want any cake. Is this a first? What? Will this be Sun Hill's firstborn? Well, I think so, yeah. Shh, listen. <laughs> I believe it. Baby, it's Sun Hill. It's brilliant. It's a girl! <laughs> Oh, it's a girl. <laughs> oh, 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 thanks, boys. <laughs> well done, sir. Well, thanks, Matthew. I didn't do anything. I just did a little of the work. Can I, uh... Yes, of course, too. Nice work, Tom. Congratulations. Ah, thank you. Nice to see you, Carl. Nice to see you. Oh, the police have come out to say to us. All right, Laura. What should we call again? Yeah. Uh, Louise. Oh, thanks for everything. It's all right, mate. It's June and Chief Super, you should thank. Hey, we'll call her June. Oh, no, don't do it to her. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm glad we get out. Ta. Are you coming or what? I better be going. Oh, hey, 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 hey. 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 Sit down. Well done, love. Come on, look at that. Lads, listen, if you're interested, I'll be having a celebration drink down the Bear's Head later on. I'm buying. You're on. <laughs> Where did you say you were going? Only joking, love. I'll give you joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, he sounded like a loudmouth drunk to me. I think you were very tolerant. Well, that's what I'm saying, isn't it? And if you take the trouble to get to the bottom of these things, you'll find it's people like Pearson who are the real victims. I just hope I was able to give him a little guidance, that's all, a little hope. All units from Sierra are scarce at Michael's Church Hall, Mallison Street. Serious disturbance in progress. Any unit to deal? Sierra Oscar 1, show us dealing. Get back as quick as you can. Sierra Oscar from Sierra 1, show us assisting as well. You off? Yeah, sorry mate, but when you've got to go, you've got to go. Sure, thanks. Never ever have I ever been so glad to hear the word serious disturbance. Happy New Year! And to you! What's going on, sir? Been you here before? How the hell should I know what's going on? But I don't think it'll take six of us to deal with it, Gary. <laughs> Doing. You see this? Delivered by hand. It was in my letterbox when I got home. She's taking me to court because she says the roof of my shed is invading her airspace by 3.6 centimetres, her airspace. I mean, it's crazy. She does it to make my life hell. Well, you've really played into her hands this time, haven't you? She's done it, hasn't she? She's got me. <laughs> Listen, Chief Inspector, you must understand. I'm sorry, Mr. Pearson, but I did warn you. Take him off. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We just finished clearing up and he came charging in here like a madman. Luckily, I had my mobile so I could call for help, otherwise I think he would have killed us. You're like some black widow spider, luring them all into your web. Going down this... You're mad! You're insane! I'm tell it to a judge! Why are you doing this to me? Get him out of here before he loses it completely. Come on. Come on. Actually, it's a very good question, Mrs. Carter-Jones. Why are you doing this to him? Because I can, Chief Inspector. Because I can. You stop fidgeting. It's not my fault. I'm itching all over. Oh. 
God, what was that? What? Something just jumped on me. What type of something? I don't know. Some creepy, crawly type of something. I don't know. Oh, dear. Oh, my God. There is, there is something in here with me. Oh! Oh, where's it going? Happy New Year, Brenda.